to the extent that sex between straight identified uh, men, white men, is acknowledged at all, the cultural narratives that circulate around these practices illustrate that people, participants, and other stakeholders believe them to be not gay in their identitarian consequences, but instead about building heterosexual men, um, strengthening heteromasculine bonds, and strengthening the bonds of white mas manhood in particular. Now, I am not going to argue against this premise. In fact, I'm going to amplify this premise by suggesting that, heteros that uh, homosexuality or homosexual behavior or activity is an often invisible but nonetheless vital ingredient, a constitutive element of heterosexual masculinity. So why focus on white men? Um, all heterosexual practice, all sexual practices are embedded within racialized and gendered circuits of meaning, um, always. What is it that whiteness does for white straight men as they come into homosexual contact with one another? And what does homosexual contact do for white heterosexual masculinity? Are you with me? Okay. Now, the reason that this is important is because a lot have, of attention has been paid to the ways that race crosscuts the sex practices of men of color, especially um, straight identified men of color who have sex with men who are often referred to as being on the down low, at least in the US context, are referred to as uh, on the down low. And many accounts, if you followed any of the journalistic writing on the down low uh, in the New York Times and elsewhere, these accounts often suggest that straight identified men of color who have sex with men are doing so because they are actually gay, but they cannot come out of the closet due to elevated levels of homophobia in their ethno-racial uh, communities. And I'm going to return to that story uh, a little bit later on in the talk, but for now I raise it to point out that in contrast, um, the links between whiteness and white men's sexual practices uh, have been largely ignored, especially white men's sexual fluidity, as if race has absolutely nothing to do, or as if white men's sex practices have nothing to do with their racial and cultural location. So by focusing on straight white men, I want to think about the ways that whiteness and masculinity as a particular nexus of power enable certain kinds of sexual contact, sexual rule breaking, sexual border crossing that aren't possible for men of color or when men of color do enact them, they're perceived through uh, uh, the lens of pathology or public health crisis. Um, whereas for white men, I will show they fly under the radar or are dismissed as inconsequential. <clears throat> 